Hi, and welcome to another episode of World Beyond Belief. Today we have a very, very special episode. You know, when we started this program, what we wanted to do, we didn't know the answers. Uh, what we wanted people to do was to help us figure out what's going on. And one of the people that we ran into in the beginning was a guy named Richard. And we've been sharing conversations with Richard for, for a while now. And we thought, wow, let's just share Richard with our audience. Let's pick a topic and share Richard. So we picked September and what's going to unfold in September. He's a very knowledgeable guy. Some people think it's an, he's an indigo child. He's very creative and you'll find he's super intelligent and knows a lot of stuff. We're going to go over some events that could happen in September. And what I'd like us to remember to do is as these events don't happen or don't happen to the degree to which they could. I think we are, we human beings on the earth should really celebrate this because I think this is the control systems, I don't know, last gasp, shall we say, to see what's going on, uh, to try to subdue the planet and, and all the inhabitants um, to their control system. So before I waste any more of our time, let's get on to our latest conversation with Richard. You know, uh, you, you got this, you, you sort of jumped on the bandwagon with CERN and portals, you know, because loads of people are going, oh, CERN and portals, you know, and I just don't believe it. Because um, uh, the original guy, John D, now he was the one who apparently opened the first portal that we know about anyway. Um, and because uh, he he pretty much was like uh, I don't know all the alphabet agencies are today, but more so because there wasn't anybody else really doing what he did. Uh, and what he what he did was he had all of Europe feeding him information on the occult, all the juicy stuff you know that you want to get to know if you're trying to be I don't know let's say black occultist, sorcerer, come you know magician or whatever you want to call it. You know and this is all the mystery knowledge that's been scattered around. So he was the original guy with more or less an you know open ended budget to go find this stuff because he was getting all the good information back to the government, of course, because he was Mister Intelligence and he set up the original secret services now he apparently opened a portal which I was just saying to Mindy um, to the macrobes and this is what they called them um, and they pretty much swapped human suffering which they feed off for um, uh, technology and information about technology and from that point, you know, we were pretty screwed, you know, it was like the dark ages, everything had gone wrong, you know, it was not good. And then we started getting technology and by the time we deciphered it, you know, we suddenly had, well, look at this, industrial revolution, everything kicked off and then, you know, we haven't looked back since really. Um, and, you know, it was either that particular incident or things related to it, you know, that kind of got us in touch with, you know, whether or not these macrobes were there from the start, you know, come 80,000 years ago and he just found a way of getting in touch with them that were already here, which is what I quite like, the fact that they were already here. Um, and, they, and he kind of did a deal with them, you know, and said, well, look, how's about we do whatever you want, you know, because you've got something we want. So you tell us what you want and, uh, you know, we'll just get it for you. Uh, and I said to Mindy that no people can go into war without being marked for sacrifice. So get this. Um, so what um, people were talking about was the oak leaves, which were on the Nazis and the British uniforms in the wars. Um, and various other, you know, occultish symbols. But um, I think there's probably a bit of research to be done into that if you want to look in more detail. But essentially, it, it goes along the lines of they instigated certain battles to be in certain places at certain times. So they had it all marked out as ritualistic sacrifices. Yeah, but, the pe but the people going in there had no idea, obviously. Yeah. You know, they just thought it was just a regular old fight, you know. And so they got into it. And, of course, they were told to beat the others at all costs, which usually meant most of them weren't going to end up winning, you know. Right. 
So this is this is going back to the okay. We'll give you what you want. We'll sacrifice a load of people, and um, we're going to get some technology. And apparently, I heard about a recent thing actually, uh, where they found uh, horse meat in sixty five percent of McDonald's burgers, and human meat in about forty percent of them being sold across America. Mm. Yeah, we're and the. Hu- did you hear about that one with the kids being sacrificed and, you know, bloodletting and stuff, and they got rid of the bodies in a mincing machine and fed it back to the people? Yeah, that was part of the Hampstead cover-up. Mm, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Right, yeah. You know, let's go back to this other, uh, this other idea of the technology. Yeah. I'm thinking now, after re- actually after reading an article you sent me and some other things, that there's two separate groups. The one group is probably the uh, fallen angels, the group that's been here from the beginning and, yeah. and wiped out the original technology that we had by destroying the, the libraries of Alexander and all those things. More recently, however, this is just hypothetical. More recently, however, there's another group that came in. And this other group is mostly AI. And this AI group is doing the deals now that you're talking about since 1500. Mm. So, okay. we've, so we've got an original uh, like nemesis that's been here forever, you know, 80,000 years or however long they are, uh, <clears throat> they're speculating this could be. But mm. then there's this AI group. And I, I just did some uh, stuff on looking at the various patterns that um, they use as AI templates. You know, the obvious one is the uh, the template they use for false flags. There's always a stand down. There's always uh, uh, c- uh, security glitches. There's always um, the news story is already there, always there before the event happens. Uh, they use crisis actors. They keep everybody. That's kind of a template that an AI would use. And well, I, I think people would use it as well. I don't think I can say that's an AI, but carry on. Yeah, and then there's the ancient one I was looking at yesterday. Uh, remember a, a while back, uh, a Zeitgeist, Zeitgeist movie, uh, Joseph, uh, Peter Joseph and the Zeitgeist movie, and he talked mm-hmm. about how all of the uh, all of the ancient religions were based on Astronomy. Well, mm-hmm. you could look at that as a template also. In order for people to believe and follow this back then, they had to pattern it in a certain way. You know, son of God, because they were sun worshippers, even the dark sun. And then they were also, uh, um, you know, the, the 25th of December, because it's the... Uh, it's the it's the uh, winter solstice and the sun disappears for three days and then comes back. It's all very pattern like to me. Now, uh, do you know if you went back further, actually, um, go back to the original group that landed, um, and you look into um, what they started off doing. Do you remember hearing about a group called the Watchers? Yeah, it's in the Bible. Yeah, do you know what they were watching? I assume they were watching us. Nope. They were looking up. Um, they were doing astronomy, and that's what the original watchers were doing. Because if you suddenly landed on a foreign planet, you'd want to figure out where the hell you were, wouldn't you? Right. Now, that's where the astronomy thing came from, and you could date that back as far as you, know, as far as you want to go, pretty much, because that's what they did. That, they did that the best, pretty much. They were like really good at astronomy. And I think that's what gave everybody astronomy to start off with, you know, because they were kind of figuring out what was going on with these buildings. Because you remember some of the ancient some of the ancient buildings being mysteriously well aligned. Exactly. Yeah, and this was this was the ancient astronomy. So the astronomy came very early and the religions, funnily enough, uh, if you look at Christianity for instance, I mean you've got Gnosticism and everything, you know, if you go that back before that and paganism. Right. You know, you, You've got pantheism, and then you've got mystery religions and everything. It all goes well back, you know. But if we if we start at around, I don't know, circa 2000 BC or something, um, 
what you've got is the the Egyptians um, around that kind of era. You know, I mean, they go back a little further in both directions, but um, they've got the original um, the original stuff, and they stole their religion. You see, theirs wasn't original either. This is the problem. Everything's not original. Um, and what you get, I, I was going to use the brilliant phrase to you, right, to say nothing's original, everything's a remix, and, which is very true, you know, especially if you listen to music. Um, but it's true of everything, you know. You look back and you start seeing the patterns that were developing, the original ones, and they're, it's exactly the same. Nothing's changed. Um, all they try and do is they just try and make people forget when it last happened, you know. So when it happens again, they can just do exactly the same thing. And people react in exactly the same ways they did originally because they're still basically the same. Um, so the religions all came about and what they did was they pinched bits from the religions and um, to sort of throw people out. They uh, What they did was they took bits from all the original early stuff and they divided it amongst the religions and pretty much said pick a religion that's what you're going to learn now if somebody picks a religion you don't hear people changing to seven different religions or more do you no not really exactly so the knowledge was neatly spread amongst the religions therefore one group couldn't have it all because the one thing that all revolved around pretty much was we have the knowledge you don't that's what makes us powerful and uh, that's exactly where they're going these days, you know, like master the human domain and everything, you know, it's like they're trying to get in touch with the information. They're trying to have more information than anybody else has got and clearer information because they love dropping in disinformation into the Internet to try and keep everybody confused. They don't really know what's going on, you know, but some of us are actually figuring it out. Um, so the original religions, uh, like, for instance, there are 25 Jesuses if you want to go searching around. That'll, that'll make you go, whoops. Yeah, 25, yeah. <laughs> there's about 25 of them. Uh, I think there's actually more than that, but, you know, there's 25 good ones. You've got Horus, which is the Egyptian one. You've got Krishna going over into uh, India, and the list just goes on. You know, basically, divine conception, um, was a healer, lived a pacifist kind of life, preaching to people, um, gets killed, comes back from the dead, mysteriously three days later, also born on the 25th of December, all of them. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, that's the template. Yeah, that's it. And they just recycled the old religions. And what they did was they kind of amalgamated everything together because they were trying to do one world religion, you know. Um, and this is where I was, I was going to talk to you about God and stuff, you know, but I thought that would get into a long conversation because uh, that gets really wacky. Um, but essentially, yeah, they're just recycling it all. It's the same kind of thing as we go through the ages. Uh, Constantine of Rome decided to write the Bible. Um, so he, he made the, you know, really good production version of the Bible. And this was like 350 years afterwards. So, you know, there was not a lot of original stuff. And they only picked things that really went with, you know, we'd like to have a leader who's a complete pacifist and died, you know. But let's say, I don't know, there was a God because, I don't know, we've got, well, a couple of billion people who believe in God, right? Right. Okay, so you're God. You're in heaven. Uh, and you go, all right, let's go back. How long have humans been around? I mean, people say 100,000 years. Some people go a little bit further and say, I don't know, a quarter of a million years, you know, in any kind of respect of being, you know, vaguely human anyway. Um, but, I mean, I'm playing for like 80,000, probably 50,000, you know, for this modern kind of uh, twist we've got. But I'm going to go for 100 and be reasonable. Now, since 100,000 years ago, 99 point something percent of all life on the planet has been destroyed. As in, this is a species that have gone extinct out of the total of species that are about, you know. I mean, we've got new species that developed since, but, you know, a lot, of, a lot of stuff's gone extinct. So, you're in heaven, man comes to earth, you sit there for, say, I don't know, 100,000 years, yeah? Um, just watching it, you know, all, all these things happen, terrible events, you know, like life being wiped out, uh, all these animals getting killed and, you know, people being horrible to other people. And then you suddenly decide after 100,000 years, you go, I know, let's intervene. So let's pick, uh, let's go with uh, an illiterate epileptic sheep herder. Let's get him up a mountain that nobody's found yet, and uh, give him some um, commandments, you know, and we'll send him down an archangel and everything, 
uh, that should do it. And that was Moses, who actually was epileptic and completely illiterate and a shepherd, which is a really good choice for heaven, I think. Um, so they, they send him babbling off up a mountain. And then funnily enough, in uh, 300 and something AD, they name a mountain Mount Sinai because they couldn't find the original mountain he went up. You know, apparently it's difficult to find. Still looking for it today, but you know we've got Mount Sinai, so it seems like we can call it good now. You know that'll have to do. Um, and then we go, all right. Well, I tell you what, maybe that hasn't covered it. Maybe we need to really nail this one shut. You know. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some nobody from nowhere in particular, and we're going to have him brutally murdered. And yeah, that'll do it. Yep, seems plausible. <laughs> You know, right. and you go, and that's it. Heaven out. Our job is done. Does that seem plausible? You know, you think. I think that's exactly. I think that's exactly what happened. Now, I think there was a being. There's a historical being that did some of the things that Jesus did, but they're not interested in a uh, in a real being. They're not interested in somebody who. They're interested in using this template because this template works to control people. Mm. Well, yeah, it's exactly it. It's the it's the original control system now. It's isn't the it? original control system. It's the original, and they and they built in the original uh, spy system, which is the uh, confessional, and yeah. uh, the original extortion, which is selling indulgences. I mean, it really yeah. it really became uh, the perfect control mechanism that they probably used over. You know, the probably the similar thing with Horus. Similar thing with the, yeah. the other gods that preceded that. Yeah, it's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, you've got to believe in this invisible guy in the sky. He loves you, he'll kill you, and yeah. he needs money. And, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's always the go, best. Yeah. He's not good with money. Hey, no, no, that's the one thing he's just bad at. <laughs> yeah, he could create anything except money. Hey, I want to go back to September. Because Minnie oh, yeah. was telling me that you guys were going over the different dates. Why don't I have her come up here and uh, she's got things written down and I know you know things about September. But let's mm -hmm. let's put that on the world beyond belief. Okay. Right, What's the first date? Um, let's see. Well, Mindy had the 11th. Yeah. I think there was... What's the 11th? Let's look at the calendar so I know what day it is. Uh, it's Friday. The 10th. the 10th. That's the first one I had. That was came from Max Egan, who met a guy who was a banker in Australia, who told him that on the 10th, which is a Thursday, the economy would collapse. Um... Who knows? I mean, we talked about that a little before. Well, that's a Thursday. So that mm -hmm. makes sense that that would happen before the 11th. And the 11th, you have two days. They usually plan things on a Friday. So people don't know how to react. And they have trouble getting themselves together. I mean, that, that is the last available time before the new year. Yeah, let's right. see... On the, on the 11th, they saying at the crash? Well, we were talking, when we were talking earlier, Richard, you were saying that you thought, what did you say about that? I was, I was feeling it a little bit later on, you know, like the last week in September, 23rd to the 30th. Because I, I think it's got to play into a currency reset because I think if something's been going on for one, two, well, I don't know, it'll be going on for two weeks. If you pull it on the 10th, you've got to do a currency reset on the 1st of October. That gives you one, two, three weeks. You know, do you think that the stock market is going to go into a three week free fall? No, actually, the predictions around the stock market sound encouraging. Because if they only fall 25, what do you say, 25%? I mean, there's still a currency in play, it seems. Yeah, it's not enough. Now, this is, this is what I was saying, you see, because 
I think um, they've got to, they've got to kick things in. The twenty third is pretty much climate chaos day. You know, we were talking about twenty third, twenty fourth, and I mentioned the Madonna concert. Oh, well, go, we'll go through the dates again anyway. We'll, we'll start yeah, do that. start from the top. So, okay, so we've got the tenth and the eleventh, which I mean, I'll, I'll put that down as plausible possible stock market crash. You know, they can they can give it a taste. I think if they start mainstreaming it around there, I think they've got to they've got to get everybody nervous. You know. I think it's going to be a media. It's going to be a media storm. They're going to have to build on, and maybe they think it will take a couple of weeks. Then they're going to pull a, you know, a disaster or something, natural event, whatever they're going to call it, which is then going to make it free fall because we're playing out for the currency reset on the first of October, I think. Um, so, okay, we'll factor that in. So we'll say tenth and eleventh stock market crash. Fourteenth is jubilee year kicks off. 15th, we've got Jade Helm is ending, um, which is on the same day of the UN resolution for Palestine to become a state. Uh, Mindy put in alien invasion on the 15th, which would probably go hand in hand with a stock market crash. You know, if it's if it's crashing and then you pull an alien invasion. Mm, but that's on the last day of Jade Helm. And it's almost an excuse for the guys not to pack up and leave, you know. Aha, Jade Helm continues, and we will have martial law, which will pretty much throw the whole markets down the toilet if America breaks out into martial law, right? Right. Well, I think they're pretty much into martial law. It's just a matter of they haven't announced it. You've got. Have you uh, seen the Have you seen the signs on the back of the trucks? No. What trucks? Ah, where have you been? Oh, you'll love this one. Um, they've got uh, truck drivers who are always incredibly inquisitive about their cargo um, and some of them have been checking the back of their trucks and they found um, like some I don't know sandwich board kind of looking things yeah, um, yeah. which say martial law is in effect and they ship in I don't know 30,000 of them or something around that's great that's yeah, they found them. They, they 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 printed them a while back, you know, and they've got martial law is in effect. It's going to happen. It's I just a matter of when they're going to do it. Yeah, it's like just we, Charlie. You should find that because that that's a good one. There's a picture of it. It is a good uh, one. But now you've got this. Uh, the, all these events bracketed. Uh, your new moon starts on the 13th, which is usually a beginning thing, and I'm sure they're astrologically uh, literate and the whole thing ends on the 28th with a full moon which is which is they're staging a uh, the Tomorrowland festivals which uh, no you, tomorrow well yes and no Tomorrowland starts on the 25th actually on the that's 20th, right it goes through the 27th goes through the 27th so everything's over yeah. on the 28th then yeah but the 28th yeah. Well, did you, is... did you know on did you know on the twenty eighth? Um, it's uh, the last blood moon of a series of four. Right, and the feast of tabernacles. And if it's the full moon, it's also Yom Kippur, isn't it? Because that's usually uh, on a full moon. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got we've got you're right. The feast of tabernacles is on the twenty seventh. Okay. Yeah. We have our dates a little bit confused, but. Okay. Yeah, you got you got the right events there, definitely. Tomorrowland's in there. Um, they've also got. Uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned this one. The Sustainable Development Summit on the 25th with the Pope. Oh, that's a big one. He's. Yeah. I, I think that's the introduction of. Uh, they've changed it from Agenda 21 to Dignity by 2030, and I've read through that document. It sounds really sweet and nice, unless you're awake. Yeah. If you're awake, you know what's between the lines. You know it's not <laughs> going to be pretty. Oh yeah, they've they've written into uh, almost law. It's um, a few more of uh, I don't know. Let's just say the presidential specials. Um, that apparently they can take control of your food. Yes. Yes. They You've can heard take... of that one? That's lovely, isn't it? The, the food, of course, transportation, of course, medicine, of yeah. course, that it's going to be the, the official turning over of all those control systems to the UN, I believe. Mm. Now, well, have you, seen the, have you seen the UN trucks being shipped about? Yes, we have them, they have them all over the US. You yeah. have, you seen them, have, you, have you seen them as well with the gray 
uh, like stickers over the top of the UN uh, thing on the side. To disguise them, right? Yeah. yeah. We've seen pictures of that. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're sneaking them around. They're not moving them around. They're sneaking them around, I think, is probably a better way of describing yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, they, They've sort of got... Um, They've got a bit of a contingent here from um, various other nations. What, what's Russia got? Is it 20,000 troops in at the moment? Something like that. They're supposed to have a submarine in the Gulf of Mexico or two. Mm, there's, a, there's a lot of foreign military sort of getting in on this, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's almost as if they're getting ready for something. <laughs> you know, that's what one guy described it as. And he said the Department of Homeland Security... Uh, he said that they're all pretty much waiting, and he says that he just has this air of they're waiting for something to signal the event. You know, and they're, they're writing about that now, you know, saying, well, you know, it all seems to have gone a bit quiet. You know, it's like we're ahead of time, we prepped, and, you know, we've got all this stuff, but now what's next, you know, question mark, and they're kind of waiting there for something to happen. So we, this is why we're doing a bit of planning here to try and get all our little events together. Now, how about on the 22nd, uh, the day of Arafat, uh, representing the day of resurrection, waiting for judgment, and the gates of heaven to open. Oh. That's, the, that's the Mecca pilgrimage, by the way. So they're going to... Uh, walk to Mecca or get to Mecca uh, yeah. and of course Mecca is where they house the uh, the cube oh yeah the big set cube yeah and uh, incidentally the next day on the 23rd I was saying to Mindy uh, CERN is up to full power they have a full power test on the 23rd and the 24th wow that's interesting. I thought it was like the end of the CERN season. So I guess they ended with a bang, so to speak. Oh, I'll tell you what, they blew everything up when they tried to get up to full power before. It's all screwed up, so they had a load of trouble. Um, but they so happened to have booked it on the 23rd and the 24th. Now, I was saying to Mindy about, remember our original 007 John D, uh, and his portal trick, you know, and if it's true and he did a portal and, you know, uh, you don't necessarily need to have uh, all the power from CERN. I said to Mindy that CERN's a shredder. Um, you know, I said it's more or less like putting your car through a shredder. You know, you get metal, you get rubber, you get plastics, and you know all the little bits that come off it. And you can separate it into little containers. You know, now if you've got a particle collider that's smashing really small particles, you don't collect much. You know, unless you have the thing running and really piling loads of them through. Um, and all you need to do is collect them and harvest what it is you're looking for. Uh, and this was going back to, remember our talk on antimatter, dark matter, that stuff, um, where we talked about it being weaponized. Well, if you want to make people go nuts and you need lots of the stuff and you need to get it to certain locations to pretty much set off bad feeling in the world, you know, uh, so it's literally like Ghostbusters 2, that green slime running under, or the pink slime running under the city. You know, they've got that stuff all apparently anyway. And if they move that around and they're starting to get that in play for the 23rd, 24th, it's like everything is gearing up, you know. Maybe they took the pins out of the stock market on the 10th and the 11th. It started to drop. It's dropping, but they haven't destroyed it. The dollar's still in play. It's not the end. Um, so then we move through to 22nd, we've got the Mecca Pilgrimage. On the 23rd, we've also got the Feast of Sacrifice. This is Ed al, uh, was it Adha or something? It's a Muslim feast of a sacrifice. Uh, that's on the 23rd. Um, we've got the climate, climate Chaos, which I think is that day, actually. I think that was the French minister saying, uh, we have 500 days until Climate Chaos. That's officially when that one runs out, so... We thought that would be an interesting day. Um, then on the 24th, I was saying to Mindy about the Madonna concert in Philadelphia. Uh, the opening theme is Desecration of the Bride and Arrival of Fallen Angels. Yeah, they don't That's, do stuff like uh, nice. <laughs> uh, Mary Poppins anymore. No, the hippie stuff's gone, isn't the it? The hippie you know? stuff's <laughs> gone. Everything's gone. Now we can do Desecration of the... Uh, of the whatever. Of the bride. That's of the bride. Of the bride. Bride. Yeah, that's it. We can really kick it in. 
So meanwhile, but, uh, that, so meanwhile you also, have, have so, this antimatter. Yeah, well, this is it. Now, if, we, if we're harvesting lots of this stuff... Um, it's not going to open a portal. It's not going to do anything particularly interesting, you know, by way of weaponizing anything. But it should potentially send people nuts, violent, restless, generally coming out on the street and being... It, it'll put people in bad moods, you know, and should generally set off civil unrest in any location it's taken to. Uh, you can imagine they're going to have some favorites by that point that they're going to want to blow up because they've been trying for a race war for a while, you know, blacks and whites and stuff in America. Uh, so they might, you know, unlock a couple of little regions as trials and see if we can get a bit of unrest going because you've got to have a good excuse for martial law. Well, As if it is already there by now. Right. Well, the way I understand black matter is that everybody has some in them and when it's leashed somewhere... The black matter in everybody and animals and everything comes alive and starts yeah. to uh, uh, yeah, act out, if you if you will. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I said that to you last time, actually. You know, the dark matter stuff, but it may, yeah, it makes everyone go nuts. So if you if you've got a heap of this stuff and you can get it somewhere, make it generally, I don't know, uh, uncontained. Um, and have enough of it in a spot, then yeah, it'll 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 get people angry and get them out there, you know. And you can really kickstart some stuff because the only way you're going to go to the government is like if you've got civil unrest, you've got rioting on the streets, you've got really nasty stuff happening, you know. Then you're going to go, oh yes, we need a police state. We must contain these mad people, you know. Right. Um, so that that's all leading into it. So I think that's totally. It's totally got to happen, and I think they're just trying to get enough of it because they can't take a chance with things not going the way they want it to. Um, now we've also got on the 25th the Sustainable Development Summit from the Pope. Right, that happens on the 25th in Philadelphia. And, you know, um, Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. Wouldn't that be... Poetic or something to unleash. I mean, with CERN going full power, possibly mm. unleashing that Madonna I, I, there, Pope I, I, there. I, I, wouldn't that wouldn't that make some great headlines if the Pope's there and there's rioting on the streets? Yeah, that would be great. I'd love to go to that concert. And <laughs> the, the unleash, yeah, <laughs> unleashing of the you know because what she does, she does satanic rituals. That's what she does. That's all she does. You know, wrapped in a uh, wrapped in the guise of a rock concert, she's in there doing a ritual, uh, summoning yeah. whoever she summons in that ritual. Um, yeah. And then also, yeah. you, you've probably listened to uh, to DJ. She's on Level Nine News, and she came out with all this stuff about uh, Jade Helms' connection to AI and how AI is going to do a lot of monitoring. And the thing that's easy for them to track and predict is fear and anger. Mm. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced of the AI story yet. I've, I've got to hear more on that one because um, I, I don't think they need it, to be fair. Um, and I, I think they can perfectly do what they want to do without that. Um, there's, uh, if, you, if you get involved with really high technology computers and stuff. I mean, IBM scratching their heads and they're calling, um, I've forgotten the name of it, it's a Canadian company that do commercial quantum computers. They've got them on sale, so you can buy a quantum computer and they're saying, just how quantum is your computer? <coughs> Yeah, you know, and a bit like that, like how quantum is it? I know you're calling it a quantum computer, but you know, have you just got a Rubik's cube with something quantum in it? You know, in like a like a I don't know fuzzy ball or something, just to show off the management who just paid twelve million for this thing, while you've got a load of relatively new processors sitting under the cover, because they they're just not convinced. Because um, if you've got a real quantum computer. Um, they are really skittish. And the problem with new types of computers is nothing works on them. Operating systems screw up all the time. They're just not reliable, you know. And the one thing you want is a reliable system. 
um, and they they aren't there, you know, as far as anyone's concerned. Even IBM is just, you know, they're pointing fingers. Everyone in the industry is just going, we don't believe it. And that was what DJ was saying. She actually alluded to that, saying, yeah, well, you have these qubits, you know, and she was going through, like, how this thing works, and it has multiple qubits, which is its way of processing um, uh, the commands going through it. Um, and she, she talks about like various things, which are, she's basically reading from the website of this guy, this company in Canada who sells the computers. She more or less read verbatim what was on the website in various places. And I kind of went, all right, that's where she got her research from. Um, so this is why I sent you back a, an email going, mm, wouldn't be too sure of this. Yeah, um, she, the AI, sorry, go on. She, she says, she, 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 he said, how do you know all this? She says, I read it. So she, That's right. She, she did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so it's abs absolutely I, right. She did. Um, it's published, and people are selling these things. You know, who who could you possibly call a fake these days? You know, it's not like anyone would lie to us now, is it? No, exactly. So I don't. I didn't want to interrupt your. We were at the Madonna concert in September. Yeah. Um, so we're on the twenty fourth at the moment, right? So we're we're having the Madonna concert. We've kicked off. We're desecrating the bride and enjoying the arrival of the fallen angels. Now, actually, there was an interesting one. Um, what was it? The Hoover Dam, um, and there was some talk about the Hoover Dam popping. Um, now, if Madonna's got a concert on the twenty fourth, um, I would I would place an extra one in there, and I'd say the Hoover Dam's going to go between the twenty fourth and the twenty fifth. Yeah, I'll put that in the diary. Actually, I, 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 that's an interesting one. So, who, who the dam break? I think I think they'll do it uh, because they've talked about um, the Hoover Dam going. And I don't know whether you saw the cinema show on the side of the dam. Do you see that? Yes. Yeah, and what they were saying was effectively the Antichrist will be born from water, you know, and they're, they're kind of alluding to the fact that, well, not fact necessarily, but they're saying he comes from underwater. Um, and I think people were pushing around the idea that the Hoover Dam was going to be, because they suddenly started to do all this, like, interesting attention around it, you know, that they were kind of pointing a finger uh, and they said they'd blow up the Hoover Dam, and then that would pretty much kickstart the Antichrist, because Madonna's doing the ritual to bring in the Antichrist, and this is where it's all starting. Uh, we've got the Pope involved now, haven't we? Because he's around. Right. Uh, so the Pope's addressing the U.S. Congress on the 24th, the same day as the Madonna concert. Coincidence? Mm, don't think so. And you could... You could possibly put the Hoover Dam in late on the 24th or early on the 25th, you know, where it goes afterwards when the ritual's been done and there must be a sacrifice. So uh, what we've also got, which I haven't put in the diary, is terrorist attack. Um, because I think one of the things that's got to happen in between the 23rd and the 30th is you've got to have a reasonable scale terrorist attack. Uh, in America, um, there was uh, there was a group of people who said apparently they put a nuke under every city in America, uh, which is interesting. Um, haven't really looked at that one in as much detail as I probably should do, um, but actually it's meant to be a group who's fighting the new world order. Is it? Am I going wrong? No, it is the new world order. Yeah, they've said they put a nuke under every major city, uh, so if anyone tries to take them down, they'll blow up the cities. Oh, man. Uh, oh, that's interesting. That one, that, that one I heard, yeah, so it is the New World Order. Sorry, it was a while back when I read that one. Well, uh, that, that seems plausible, actually, because you'd want to have something that would really stop people from, you know, just going around picking them off. Yeah, well, I know that we had some uh, nukes missing from Texas that showed yeah. up showed up in uh, South Carolina. And I think mm. South Carolina, I think Charleston, <coughs> South Carolina, is a sub base. So if you wanted to put nukes in the middle of the uh, the Atlantic to set off your uh, your uh, asteroid coming in, mm. you, you no, know, nukes be... aren't going to do it. They're, they're not going to. They're not going to produce enough. Um, I mean, they'll make a tsunami, yeah. But I mean, we we want to be talking about something which is going to. Uh, hit Boston and pretty much do all of Florida. Um, I mean, there was a few CIA um, people uh, I remember hearing about, and what happened was uh, they were, um, I don't know how you describe it, like, you know, you know when you sort of remote sense things, yeah? 
Yeah. Um, well, they were doing it kind of into the future. So they were traveling into the future and remote sensing the future. Uh, and apparently they went to New York and they found it was underwater and they said Florida was under six feet of water, you know, and they said this was like, I don't know, years later. So this is not 2015, this is like 2050. Um, and they found that New York and Florida and most of the East Coast, they said, was underwater. I wonder if that was Courtney Brown's project, that this remote viewing project, because that was, I don't know if you remember Cliff High a few years back predicting the global coastal event, and mm. from Courtney Brown's uh, work with remote viewing. It was 2013, June 2013 it was supposed to occur, but people are reviving that prediction now to occur during September. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, yeah, I've heard that one. I've heard that one. But the, I can't get my head around exactly what's going to happen. And then, you know, because you've got the asteroid thing, which will do the trick. I mean, that'll, right. you know, that'll, that'll sort it out. But um, at the same time, um, we've got the other one where people are just spacing out about Nibiru. You know, that's, that's the other classic, isn't it? That's the, that's the elephant in the room. Because everyone keeps banging their head against the wall with Nibiru, you know, going, well, hang on a minute. Didn't it turn up in 2013? Hasn't it turned up in 2014? 2012, you know, that would have been good if it had turned up then. Uh, and they keep sort of changing the dates. Um, and, you know, I've, I've heard people saying, well, yeah, we're tracking Nibiru. We've got a second sun. Um, now, bear in mind that I've got a massive telescope, you know, that I point around at things. Um, and, you know, from where they say it's going to be, I'm screwed because it's under the ecliptic, so I can't see it. Um, not at the moment, but it probably will show up. They're saying um, that uh, if Nibiru is lurking around, um, we've got a bit of a gravitational issue. Being as Nibiru, apparently, if you want to, if you want to play out the full story, is not actually a planet. Okay, um, it's actually a sun that didn't get going. It's uh, like a dark star, they'd say. Um, and it's surrounded by, I think it was four planets or something. So we're talking about another solar system. So we have another solar system coming in at us. Now, this thing's smaller, obviously, than our sun, you know, but it's pretty chunky by, you know, the way things go. Um, and they're saying that it's, it's going to be, like, of the order of ten times bigger than Jupiter or something. And the one that's going to get nearest to us, which is going to come inside the Earth and the Moon, so this is inside the Moon's orbit, uh, is about, uh, what do they say, predictions go from four to seven times the size of the Earth. You know, and this thing's going to be, like, closer than the Moon, which is going to, it's going to trash everything if it, that comes in the way they say it does, you know. Um, they say that stuff like this has happened before. I've had a guy who sent me 20 years of research, um, which he's been on, which has alluded to the fact that uh, this bad boy comes around every 350 to 400 years, uh, not the 3,600 years that I think Zachariah Sitchin was saying. Uh, he's saying this thing comes around more frequently, but it doesn't get that close because the orbit is insane. So it moves all over the place. So you can't really predict where it's going to go, unfortunately. Um, but they say ancient civilizations have seen it. You get massive meteor showers, massive, really, really bad. And they also say that the tail from this thing, because it's traveling at, uh, what do they say, 40 kilometers a second, not 40, uh, no, 70 kilometers a second. Um, they said it's, it's traveling at such speed that when it goes around, the tail of it will apparently uh, hit the atmosphere and it will send, um, what is it, iron, uh, something irony anyway, I can't remember what it is, like dust. It's red dust basically based on iron, you know. Anyway, like iron oxide or something. Anyhow, so this red dust gets into the atmosphere and it turns the seas and the rivers and the waters red. So the waters will run like blood. Okay, and then I know that there's a prediction for the sun being blocked out for several yeah. days. Yeah, well, that would do it. That would do it. If that thing's coming, that would do it. I mean, I've, I've um, I got some interesting information. Around. I mean, I did quite a lot on Nibiru, actually. I could talk for ages about Nibiru, with all the random stuff that's been going on. Um, they've been closing all the observatories, and they've been closing all the libraries. Uh, England now doesn't have any observatories left. 
Uh, I think national observatories, they've got rid of all of them. Um, they've been knocking off um, the American astronomers who've been involved in anything, in any way to do with this. Because uh, they discovered it in 90, 1984, I think it was, or sometime really early. Um, so this has been around for decades, this particular one saying Planet X, you know. And Planet X was more or less a gravitational disturbance, you know. It was like the missing elephant from the room because it was making some of the planet's orbits wobble. And they said, well, there must be something there, because every time we've come up with some sort of uh, explanation to why planets wobble, we've assumed there's another planet that we just can't see yet that's a bit further away. And that's how they kind of went through all our planets and went, aha, there's the planet that's been messing with that planet's orbit. And then they said, well, all of them have got a problem. Like, now we've found all the planets, now we can't explain what's going on with their orbits. There must be another planet. So it would then make us a binary solar system. So we have our sun and we have like the anti-sun, you know. So we have the dodgy sun that doesn't really put out much heat. Uh, we have planets going round it, but it does put out some heat. Um, this is where the Anunnaki apparently are from. So if you want to get interesting and biblical on this one, um, the Anunnaki, uh, this is going back to the people saying 3,600 years for a lap. Uh, they're saying that was where the Anunnaki jumped in. But I'm thinking, well, we're talking about 80,000 years ago, so, you know, well and truly sooner than that. But they're saying the Anunnaki are on this planet. So this is our original astronauts. Uh, they managed to get onto that planet as it was going by because it comes in pretty close. Not often, but it comes in pretty close. Um, now, they said, now remember I told you about Tiamat? Right. The planet, right, that right. blew up, which gave gave us the flood. Okay. Yeah, so we right. so we've got the so we've got the original astronauts coming, okay, and we've got a, a possibly an alien race chasing them down to Earth as they get there, circa eighty thousand BC or fifty thousand BC, around that kind of era. Um, now, an alternative switch to the story is there wasn't an alien race chasing them in. We get Nibiru showing up. So we've got this other solar system which comes in and bad luck for Tiamat, it gets whacked by one of the planets going around Nibiru or it gets, you know, it gets wrecked somehow by a comet that's being dragged along because apparently this solar system can suck on some comets and change their orbits. And this is where we get all the, you know, meteor showers and everything like that. Um, the only problem is that the Nibiru people are, at the moment, not saying anything about when it's meant to be coming by, because they always get that wrong. Uh, I've had August. Uh, it's coming by end of August. Um, I've heard September. We've got December. And I think the most popular one at the moment is March next year, um, where it's, it's going to be floating by. And there's some people who've like charted it on a map and everything. So, you know, I think the bottom line is we're screwed if we know when this thing's going to show up. Um, but, you know, it keeps popping back up on the horizon, you know, going, yeah, well, you know, if it is up there, that's what's causing all the earthquakes around the world. Because let's face it, we've been having insane amounts of earthquakes, haven't we? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> have you seen? Have you seen how many there are? Have you been to some of these sites yet? That tell you how many earthquakes we're having. We've been looking at that, and also the volcanoes. Yeah, uh, that's the, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They, uh, so it makes sense. The March date makes more sense rather than during the uh, Madonna concert in September, because it seems to me we'd be feeling some kind of an effect, other than just earthquakes. I don't know. Also, you have to remember that the Pope has postponed the year of light to begin on December 8th. When it should oh, really? Been, it should have been uh, beginning in September. Oh, hang on, let me get that date down. That's so I, interesting. So I don't know whether, whether they, they don't have it together December? for that, or maybe Lucifer's not going to uh, show up until next year. Because the year of the light, of course, that's the light bearer. That's... That's when yeah, they introduced yeah. this uh, this Luciferian god. Well, oh, yeah, absolutely. I know that, yeah. Uh, well, that's, in, that's interesting. They put it off. I wonder if they're just as screwed on their dates as everybody else is because this thing's really messing with them. <laughs> um, have you heard about Lucifer, the uh, telescope? Yeah, it's owned by the Vatican. Yeah, do you, do you know where they put it? No, where did they put it? Holy Indian Mountain, where portals have been known to appear. 
Okay. And the Indians freaked out about it and really wouldn't let them put it up there. And they got beaten up by the American government and told that the Vatican's allowed to put it on their holiest mountain. Yeah. Interesting place to put it. Hmm. I know, I don't know why they wanted to put it there, but apparently the mountain was uh, noted for its weirdness, I think is probably the best way of describing it. Uh, portals appearing, apparently E.T. sightings, that kind of thing, just all kinds of not normal goes on around there, and they put a very large stereoscopic telescope there, which is, you know, wow, it's enormous, and it's two telescopes, effectively, so it's like the goggles of Lucifer. Is this Great near, name, by the way. Is this near the uh, the Himalayas? No, it's in Arizona, I think. Oh, oh! I thought that you, I thought you were telling me it was an Indian site. No, it's uh, as in American Indians. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's in the wrong place for the American Indians. Uh, let me see where it is. Um, if I can uh, see if I can get it, Mount Graham Observatory. You can look that up and see what's going on with that. I'm not sure if I've got much of the list and address. There we go. Uh, Mount Graham, Graham County, Arizona, United States. And it's on Wikipedia. It's called the Vatican Advanced Telescope. Sorry, Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope. But you can't beat having the Church of Lucifer sitting uh, out there in Italy. That's a nice one. <laughs> St. Lucifer, they call him. The yeah, Church of St. Lucifer, that's it. Yeah. There, well, yeah. The, now the Pope is doing uh, masses to the New World Order and Lucifer. I've, I've got a couple of the tapes on the next World Beyond Belief we're going to do. Yeah, did you get the one when uh, the Pope was brought in? Um, get, the, get the Latin translation to English. Uh, they inaugurated him in Latin, um, and they were saying it was Lucifer. They actually mentioned Lucifer about four or five times while they were inaugurating him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hey, yeah it's uh, lovely, He's lovely, presenting Lucifer as the father of Christ. Lucifer is the... Uh, wow, father of Christ, that's a twist, isn't it? Well, they, they're just amazing, <laughs> amazing what they can do. I want to see how they work that story together, you know, father of Christ. Well, technically... Um, if you if you go by some of the other twisty things that have been said, uh, immaculate conception does not exist. By the way, uh, I'm sure you probably put that together yourselves. Um, but what it actually means is it. Well, there's all hidden meanings through everything. Uh, immaculate conception is when you get the original Anunnaki or fallen angels pretty much taking a lady to the quiet area in a park and bringing her back pregnant. Right. Mm. And so, um, well, that kind of, if that feathered into the story, then it would turn out that Jesus is a hybrid, if he existed. Um, we're, we're reasonably convinced that, you know, some of it, some of it's true. We reckon he did exist. Um, and we, uh, I got a really interesting one, actually, a twist on that story. Uh, if, if he did exist, um, well, they lost about 30 years of his life where he cleared off to the Himalayas, I think, to study the mystery schools. And he came back with all these healing powers, which he'd learned from the Himalayas, which is, uh, well, yeah, where he'd spent, I don't know, 20 years or something. Anyway, so he comes back um, and um, he's going around doing, plying his trade, as it were, you know, healing people, uh, dealing out the good word and everything. Um, and then when... Judas turns up. Judas is his brother in one of the stories who looks just like him, like a twin brother. And they reckon that, uh, or if he's not his brother, he looked like him or was made to look like him somehow. So anyway, so when he goes all through to the crucifixion, Jesus gets away with it, right? Makes, does a runner, effectively, and Judas gets it. So he gets crucified, not Jesus. And then, so of course he can come back because he didn't get crucified to start with. Well, and then there's the story of the uh, Holy uh, Holy Grail. Where oh yeah, that's Jesus that's a good one. Jesus escapes to uh, <laughs> southern uh, southern France, actually the Languedoc, and uh, oddly enough, um, 
thousand years later, there starts this um, religion following exactly the teachings of Christ that had to be, of course, immediately wiped out by the Catholic Church, the Luciferian Catholic Church, uh, mm. called the Cathars. I'm sure you know that. But that's mm. the, you know, apparently, uh, according to that story, he and, uh, was it Mary Magdalene, his, uh, his mate, made it to France and uh, avoided the crucifixion and the, and the Holy Grail is uh, her, the blood of Christ, carrying the blood of Christ up there. Yeah, that's an interesting twist, isn't it? I reckon I figured, I figured out the Holy Grail, that it was just some piece of crap cup. Um, which made total sense because there was there was loads of holy grails, not just one. There was loads. Um, it wasn't one in particular. And uh, if you ever look back at the uh, the way they used to do stuff, um, they I mean, pretty much they loved to enjoy a drink. I think they were, I think Jesus was probably a bit of a wino uh, <laughs> along with his uh, yeah. along with his uh, disciples, and they had a massive cup to drink out of so they could share the booze. You know, when they managed to get some. Um, and people called that the Holy Grail because it was the big cup. You know, they assumed it was the Holy Grail, but it was just the cup they were sharing. Um, and I reckon what the Holy Grail was, was he would get any cup, right? He would fill it with water. He would bless it. And it would have to be a crappy cup so people didn't really figure out what the hell it was. And then he would give it to people and promise them eternal life because their faith in him offering them eternal life, they would believe it, and then that would allude to life after death. So when you die, you come back as somebody else in the next life, which they distributed neatly into another religion. Um, so, which of course he was privy to because he cleared off and learned all about it. So he's saying, well, if you believe, you will come back as another person, you know, but he didn't say that, he said eternal life. So it was eternal life for your soul, but not for your body. So, of course, he gave that to them as a blessing, and they reckoned, aha, the cup giving eternal life, and they mistook it. And they thought that it was a cup with magical properties, which it actually wasn't. It was just any cup that he blessed. Yeah, I think that he did teach reincarnation, but it was taken out of the Council of Nicaea. The, the original Jesus, if it was Lazarus or so, whoever it was back then, before they mm. put, the, uh, put the Luciferian overlay on it, uh, yeah. That's interesting. Well, how, how about John the Baptist being Joan the Baptist? Have you heard that one? No, that's interesting. Where did you get that? Yeah, it wasn't wasn't a, wasn't a John. It was a Joan or you know something. It was a it was a girl's name anyway. Uh, that they uh, that was a Constantine of Rome change. That they uh, they switched it because you can't have ladies giving out that sort of treatment to people. You know, it's no, got to be a guy. And the uh, baptism in. Uh you know, you see the baptism in water a lot in the satanic rituals, too. You have to go through... It's, it's all very similar, isn't it, when you look at it? Yeah, you go through the water. And that's why I wanted to get back to the uh, discussion about Madonna and uh, the Hoover Dam. Because now, is, is this a baptism, then? Is it a baptism? Is it, is it coming forth? Now, Hoover Dam is being referred to as a stargate. Yeah, heard that. So... Who is coming through the Hoover Dam with the water, or maybe it's maybe it's just uh, coming through the water? I, it'll be interesting to see if these things play yeah. out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, if they drain all the water out and there's something behind it, you know, that would be interesting if it was underwater and it got buried. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. But I think we can probably say, well, if they do blow the dam, baptism, water, yeah, that's all making sense, isn't it? Right. And it, it occurs right when Madonna is uh, she's done the doing ritual. her thing, yeah. Oh yeah, she's, she's rolled the ball along, hasn't she? She certainly has. It's an interesting, uh, wow, I'm glad I'm not her. And then, what's the next thing that comes up in September? Well, the thing? next thing, uh, we've, got, um, we've got some more Pope. Uh, so we've got the 26th. Uh, where we've got the Pope will be holding Mass at Madison Square Garden in New York City, dated for the 26th of September. Well, now that's an interesting date, because he's having, he's having Mass on a Saturday, which is the Sabbath, 
according to the Jews. And the first thing yep. that Constantine did when he took over the uh, over the church, well, he, he changed it from Saturday to Sunday, and Sunday is normally, you know, sun worship. Yeah, but now that's right. going back. Not of, there's not many people who know that that it's actually Saturday, not Sunday. Sabbath is Saturday. Well, Jesus supposedly held the Sabbath his whole life. He was a Jew his whole life. And uh, so now the Pope is is using this day, this this Shabbat, to uh, have his mass, and I'm sure it'll be the New World Order mass. It's called Novus Ordo. That's the yeah. One there's gonna there's gonna be something related to. Uh, it's all got to be under the guise of world peace. Oh, of course. Um, of course, you know what. What else would you want to sell to people? Sure. And it's world peace. But with world government, of course, to keep check on the world peace now, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, uh, you've got, got to have some guys keeping check on everybody. You know, you can't have any of uh, you know, this war breaking out. Absolutely. And I've, I've, I've got, talking about world peace, I've got one that will blow your head up. Okay. <laughs> if, I, if I remember the name of it now. Um, how about a society that's been set up for world peace and strangely enough, one world government, which is actively threatening all the governments around the world to start becoming peaceful, or they're going to blow up their satellites. Oh, I know who that is. That's uh, Keshi from yeah, Iran. That's a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's amazing. He's an amazing guy. He's he's uh, like redone Tesla, and he apparently with his his free energy device. He can pull these threats off. I don't know. Uh, That's an interesting one, isn't it? So that um, I mean, we've I've heard two things about this one. You know, there, there's you know, there's so much information going around. I mean, it looks great. You look at his website and go, yeah, all right, okay. So world peace, no shots fired. Thank you very much. You know, or I'll blow you up. Um, but no shots fired, or I'll blow you up. Um, so he's he's like he's got all this technology that apparently he's keeping under his hat. Um, and he's trying to say, yeah, like you said, he's, he's got these amazing energy devices, you know, we've got CO2 capture kits, we've got mini reactors. I mean, wow, you know, it's, it all sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Yes. I... And, you know, it's like as if, because so, some, somebody, uh, somebody did an article actually calling him uh, a New World Order guy, that he's, he's basically saying the same thing as a New World Order. We want world peace, brackets, or we'll kill you. Uh, but we want world peace and a world government looking after the world peace. It ultimately boils down to the same thing, whether or not you want to offer all these things. I mean, if we start seeing them, you know, I'm going to change my mind and say, yeah, this guy's great, you know. But remember the great deception where we would be shown something that seems so good that none of us would see that it's bad. That's the trick. Yeah, we, exactly. We you've, got, you've got to be on your, on your toes with this stuff. You, when you run from the New World Order, they're going to have a place to catch you. Well, and is it FEMA camp shapes? That's the thing, you know? That's how, they're going to, that's how Kissinger said they're going to get him into the FEMA camps. He says they're going to walk in because yeah. they're, they're not going to have water or food. Um, not necessarily. Um, I think I think there's going to be there's going to be more than that. I don't because they have you heard that they, I was saying to Mindy um, they started abducting children from elementary schools and taking them to FEMA camps to try and see if they could get the parents to go there. Right. And they had a drill running where the guys were pretty much, uh, I think just before that, they were arguing with, um, you know, your crisis actors. Uh, yeah. They had parental crisis actors who were saying, please give me my kids back, you know, and they were saying, no, you have to do this first, you know, and saying, you've got to come in, we need your details, you've got to sign in, and, you know, they were inside the camps. Seems a bit strange they do a drill for that now, doesn't it? Well, they do a drill for everything. You know, everything has to be beta tested, so they make sure it absolutely works. <clears throat> Mm, that's right. Well, the thing is, you see, there's. I was saying to Mindy, there's Plan A, B, C, D, and E. You know, right. there's loads of them. And there's um, if it depends if one thing goes sideways, they they have to kick off Plan B. Yeah, I think that. Uh, yeah, they're rounding them up in South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina. They're taking their 
homeless to the FEMA clamps. I think they also do, I've been doing it in California, although, I, you know, it's not as public. And uh, Yeah, I've, I've heard a bit of that as well. They, they, it's, it's, it's like scatty and they're doing bits of it. And it's like as if they're, you know, they're testing the system. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think that, uh, I always think that uh, people that like structure and this whole, this whole New World Order thing, they love structure. I mean, there's a type of personality that Myers-Briggs calls a J, a judger, where they just don't tolerate any ambiguity at all. They have to know what's going to happen before they do it. And you know what? Yeah. Human beings aren't like that. Human yeah. beings, there's always a wild card. There's always something. There's always a creativity aspect of it. Well, right. things don't drop as planned, do they, when you've got a load of people around? No, unless they're under fear. Unless they're in fear. If they're fear, they're in fear, they're going to be very predictable and they're going to do what uh, the fear drives them to do. If they're not in fear, if they're using their right brain and their heart chakra, they're going to be able to creatively think their way out of this. Although I think this September is going to be a ride. Yeah, definitely. I think that there's going to be so much fear um, that people aren't going to know what to do. They're just going to be like shattered, you know, mentally. Absolutely. Um, they're going to think, all my money's gone. I can't afford food anymore. You know, they've got, have you heard about all the preppers? You know, like pretty much stockpiling anything that's what you call an emergency supply of water, got, food. Yeah, water, food. We've got energy. We've got people going nuts for solar power at the moment, apparently. Uh, bunkers are selling out if you want a bunker which is uh, they do I think they're doing like an industrial drain pipe for thirty thousand dollars and they'll bury it in wow. your garden and you can get you know a reasonable cheap bunker for like thirty five grand in dollars. Um, they they can't get enough of them, you know, they're they're just busy all the time doing these for people because they're so frightened. Yeah, well they're and also it's illegal to be a prepper in the US now. You can't Well yeah you can't that's right. yeah. If, you, if you think if you think you're gonna stock up on dog food for Fido, you know, and, the, and you're going to survive on dog food if, the, uh, if people take your food, that's wrong because the government can take dog food as well. Absolutely. So that's... So that's <laughs> it's hopeless, isn't it? You know, well, the and then thing, let, let's, let's get some like super tiny, like um, AI nanobots intercepting your mind and doing mind control. You know, it's all this kind of stuff that makes you think it's so hopeless to fight back, we probably just shouldn't. Right, that's why I think that if we can stay out of fear and we can relax into this and not, not take these uh, predictions as fact, uh, I think that there's a lot of us that can survive. And Now, I've got, I've got back to the 20, we've got the feet, uh, the mass in the square, and Madison Square Garden on the 26th. Feast of yeah. the Tabernacle on 27th, which I don't know yeah. much yeah, about. Feast. Yeah, Feast of Tabernacles, exactly. That's, that's kicking off. That's the holiday of um, Sukkot, I think, S-U-K-K-O-T. Not yeah. sure how to pronounce it, but yeah. Um, and then on the 28th, I think we have our interesting moment, which is the last blood moon. Right. And this is where the moon will go completely red, apparently. And that should be interesting for people. And that is supposed to be uh, the final um, marker, I think, where we've got the 29th and the 30th. It'll all kick off on the 20, uh, 29th and the 30th. I think that we're going to go like in steps. So maybe we'll have a bit of a go at the stock market on the 10th and the 11th. You know, it's going to drop maybe 25% or something, you know, which will be bad, but, you know, it'll recover again. Um, you know, it'll start coming back. But then you're going to want to kick in. Uh, we want some big disasters. And I think the terrorist attack, there's going to be lots of terrorist attacks or big explosions all around. Uh, they're going to be dishing that in September, I think. Um, this is the... Uh, you know when they're opening up the borders and they're getting all these people in and ISIS right. lurking around, funded by the CIA, no less. Um, so we've got we've got them lurking, and they're not lurking for no reason. They're waiting. Well, they're also Catholic. The, the right. countries that they're coming from are Catholic, and so the Papa, 
which is the Pope, what they call the Pope here, um, is is totally in control of those people. So whatever he wow. says... I didn't, didn't see that coming. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, they opened the border to let in Catholics, so they're, they're going to be totally under control. So we've got... Going into October, we've got a currency uh, reset October 1st mm. for 234 I, countries. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've, I mean, they've, they've been bandying that one around since 2013, you know, but I've, I've got a feeling I've got currency reset and I put a question mark by it because it's not entirely a firm date, but it's got to happen around about this sort of time. Um, and there's there's another player in it as well, which has I mean this is pretty much people who've got lots of gold in the world, um, and I think they call him M1, who's the uh, final descendant of all the nobility of Europe and the East. You know they've all interbred for hundreds of years, and finally <laughs> now a piece of all of them is in this one person. You know this guy has been given control over potentially all the gold in the world and. The NWO has been trying to assassinate him for you know, a few years. They've had a few pot shots at him. He's got a couple of body doubles that didn't make it. So you know, it's been it's been a bit of a choppy ride for him. Um, and this is where they're going to do the big swapsies, where they're going to say, right, okay, so now all the money in the world is going to be gold backed, and here's here are the terms of the currency reset. You'll love this. Um, they'll kick it off around about that sort of time. So America's screwed, it's crashed. Um, we've got all the other countries who are crashing or not doing very well. They're probably in various levels of disrepair. You know, we've got a few off the coast, you know, who aren't going to be so good either. Um, now, when they come around and they say, oh, all right, okay, well, we've got too much debt. We can't handle it anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to send you back to the IMF um, the IMF is going to do SDRs, which are special drawing rights. That's their, they launched it as a currency in 2009. They did a dummy run on it as a whole currency. The idea is you can have like a billion dollar note and it's interbank stuff. So anyway, they said what we're going to do is we're going to balance all the um, accounts out and we're going to revalue your currency based on the net worth of your country's assets minus your current debt. Okay, oh so we'll take it. We'll take into account your current debt and your current assets, and whatever's left is what your currency is going to be worth. You, you feel what's coming here, don't you? Yes, yes, you can see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and this is this is the stepping stone. So when we get to this point, okay, they'll start saying to countries that are heavily in debt, "Well, all right, well, look, you you can't stop running because clearly, you know, that would be bad." What we are going to do, though, however, is we're going to elevate some currencies that have been undervalued in the past because they don't owe anyone any money and they're sitting on quite a lot of oil. So I would suggest you go buy Iraqi dinars at around about the end of September. Um, <laughs> that's going to go through the roof. They owe almost nothing and they've got lots of oil. bit, you know, choppy around there, though, so I'm not entirely sure how you get your hands on Iraqi dinars. But anyway, um, for someone who's got a suitcase of them, they'll be doing very well. Now, the whole planet then gets reset. China's currency, as the, they've been trying desperately hard uh, to devalue it, um, and they're not having much luck because, you know, altogether... Uh, they, their currency was about 13% overvalued, I think it was, about three, four months ago, earlier on this year. Uh, and they've had to reset it just to get you know, their house back in order. Um, now, when the reset happens, the Middle East will go up, China will go up, uh, a lot of Europe is going to drop, um, England's going to drop by a fair bit, we're not going to do so well out of it. America is going to be the worst hit. There is nobody around the world who's going to have anything like what they're going to be getting in a devaluation. I mean, if you went back 100 years to 1913 and you had your lovely dollar and uh, you said, oh, all right, okay, in terms of actual stuff that I could buy for my dollar, let's forward to today. And in comparison, the dollar's lost about 98% of its value in 100 years. So they've been gradually devaluing it all away. Now, unfortunately, because money's had to be printed exponentially when things start to go sideways, as they've been doing recently, uh, it gets to a point where you know the numbers just become 
blinding you know they're just like trillions and trillions are, are just flying around you know for no apparent reason i mean derivatives are like 500 trillion in a bubble at the moment the housing market's bubbled up as well and you know it's it's a horrible mess anyway so when they pop the bubble uh the currency will drop now here's the thing you see now if you're an american and the shops are full of stuff okay you're not technically starving to death and you're not te- you're not technically running out of water but you can't afford it because your money isn't worth anything. Right. So the, the shelves are full for the people who, you know, can afford it or who got out of the paper money pretty sharpish, you know. Um, so the idea is that you will have starving Americans and they can't afford water utilities, their mortgage, because interest rates will go flying up for a bit, you know, because it'll all go a bit wrong. Um, so they'll make sure that they don't have their mortgages paid, which is why the Fed has been taking over all the mortgages. Don't know whether you heard about that one. Yeah. Uh, they've, they've moved all the, you know, the, the naughty mortgages over to them, the ones that look like they're going to pop because they want to collect. Uh, so the mortgages will flip, Fed will get hold of all the assets, um, you're going to have people who effectively can't feed themselves while the shops are full of food and that's where FEMA camps come in because they will want to go there and you will have people coming out on the street literally delirious with hunger, um, not being able to get any food because the system's been slammed so hard that you know there's too many of them, they, you know, the system can't cope with that many people being out on the street hungry and food stamps have gone because the government will be told it doesn't have any money because they've just been declared bankrupt. Exactly. Sounds like Germany after World War I. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a remix. And, and Well, no, actually, if you want to mix it up a bit more, uh, the FEMA camps, what's that remind you of around wartime? Exactly, concentration camps. Remix, thank yeah. you. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's, they're absolutely concentration camps. They've even been doing schools as well. Have you seen the, the watchtowers popping up over schools and uh, shopping malls as well? Uh, oh, no, Walmart. In there. Walmart, they've got uh, razor wire around the top of Walmarts and, and guard towers. They've got, yeah. of course, Walmart has been in this from the beginning. I don't know why nobody saw it. Uh, mm. They've been ruining it. It's, it's, it's really, it's so linked, isn't it? And you, you start thinking, well, hang on a minute, we've got concentration camps everywhere in plain sight and, and people aren't really seeing it. They're just going, well, Walmart's closed because they're doing plumbing work, right? Right. <laughs> That's some damn bad plumbing there. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, they're, oh, they're just sitting and watching it and most of them don't have any idea because they're watching television. And they don't know what, but I think that September could be the month that uh, wakes a lot of people up. So that that's a good thing. Have you have you heard about the energy wave hitting us in uh, September? No. What's what? Tell me about that one. Uh, you will love this. Well, you're 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 Doctor Paul after all of the New Age. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> now th- you'll love this. Then this is right up your street. Apparently. Um, Because we are where we are in the universe at the moment, um, we are on the final rounding of our 26,000 year equinox and we are coming right back round to where we get a massive great big energy wave hitting us mysteriously about the end of September. Would you believe? Coincidence, huh? What a Um, coincidence. (laughs) This is it. And now the energy wave um, is what's been waking a lot of people up. Uh, they think because you know we've also I mean this is another link to the earthquakes and things like that you know saying maybe this is because of you know all this increased energy not sure exactly right Uh, so someone said they found a tetrahedron in the middle of the earth which was interesting you know the couple of pyramids stuck together at the base interesting Um, yeah I know that's you wouldn't see that coming that's that's a weird thing well the 26,000 reminds me of the Vedic cycles uh, you know, the, the Vedic uh, Yuga cycles, it's a 26,000 year cycle. Now, I'm reading that the Vedics, that's, a, that's basically a Luciferian uh, mix anyway, and uh, they would know. So we would be back, we would be ending the Yuga cycles. Maybe the Yuga cycle ends uh, with a bang. Maybe the Yuga cycle ends in a uh, global extinction event. And we start back with uh, very few people, um, 
you know, starting starting up uh, again. I don't know. Well, Certainly have you, interesting. Have you seen the Georgia Guidestones? Yes. Now, why would you put some big, heavy rocks uh, with some instructions on it? You'd have to be thinking, yeah, something's going to happen. Do you know? Do you know how high that place is? Do you know the altitude? No, I don't. Uh, it's of a suitable altitude that if a 5,000 foot high wave happened to slam the east coast and take everything out it would still be standing well good for the it's been nicely good, planned good for the guide stones yeah I think that's I think that's a fear tool you know I think it's like uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna show people in granite we're gonna carve it in stone oh maybe carving it in stone put some kind of a ritualistic uh, spell on it or something. I don't know. Because they always say well, it isn't carved well, in stone, you know. Well, I, I'm not sure about that. There's another weird thing as well. Um, did you know there's a hole in the stone? No. There's a hole in the stone where they put 2015? No, there's, there's just a hole. So they've, they've got a mysterious hole which is lined up on the North Star. Wait, what do you, how do you interpret that? Well, they reckon it won't be lined up on the North Star. Ah, now, this is, this is the interesting bit. Now, if you go back in history, okay, when people build things out of great big, I don't know, hunks of rock, right? Remember, we were talking about the watchers and all the uh, lining things up game they like to do to try and you know, get the stars in alignment and they'd have little slits appearing in various places and at various times the moon would show up and beam its light onto something inside the temple, you know, which would be illuminated and they could have their amazing rituals or whatever they were doing, you know. Um, and they knew that it was time because this thing would light up. Now, this is, uh, this is a twist on the Nibiru story, actually, because they said that they lined it up with the North Star because they expected that um, the Earth was going to get flipped off its axis, so we weren't going to be, you know, where, well, it's if we are on an axis, so I'm not going to go into that one, but um, <laughs> they're saying that um, however we are flying through space at the moment, we're going to get tilted, or uh, the Georgia Guidestones are going to get moved because the Earth's crust gets ripped off pretty much and slid round. Do you remember the story of Joshua's long day? No, tell me that story. Well, there was, uh, this was apparently, this was not a related to Nibiru type thing, you know, or whatever it is that's uh, messing with gravity. Uh, the story in the Bible generally goes that um, there was uh, like a great big fight scene anyway. Um, now, Joshua, who's around at the time, experiences a day that lasts for 48 hours, which is a bit weird. Right. Now, what's happened... Apparently, this is relating to the Nibiru thing and what's meant to happen um, is that the Earth gets sucked into the gravity pull of the foreign body, call it a comet, call it a planet or a sun or whatever you want lurking up there, anywhere that's whizzing past, um, and it stops the Earth from rotating. Not entirely, maybe, but it certainly slows it down to a point where it doesn't make it round and do its usual lap. Now, the problem is... Because we're floating on a bit of a lake of lava, um, when it pulls at the crust of the Earth, the crust of the Earth effectively stops moving, okay, or near enough stops moving. And this is where you start getting mountains popping up, you know. Uh, and pretty much we're talking about mountains get taller, things move, and this is where you get your huge 5,000-foot wave, potentially. If it's not an asteroid that will hit it, it's potentially... Uh, We've got like a fault line across the Atlantic being crushed into itself or pushed or, you know, whichever way it ends up getting uh, pushed and shoved. Um, and you pretty much want to be on high ground. Now, Joshua's long day pretty much says that the Earth stopped rotating effectively. They got a very long day out of it all. Um, and this was where everybody got killed by a load of asteroids that came steaming on in and killed all the armies, which were that was very convenient for them. Um, I can imagine it was quite rough. Um, but generally, I think it was a close encounter, but not a devastating encounter, you know, which potentially they're saying this one's going to be. 
So, you know, we have to sit on the fence really and go, well, you know, are we going to get something like that? If we get something of any kind of level leading up to it, which does have a bit of a tug at the earth, then it should throw the alignment out. Uh, they've had a load of Eskimos um, who've popped up and said, hey, the sun's in the wrong place, which is a bit odd. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they know, they live outside a lot. You know, their, their uh, survival depends on them knowing how to be finding their way around, and they generally use things they can see in the sky to help them get around. And when you see the sun setting in a certain place, you know, for years and years and years, and then it sets in a slightly different place, you go, uh, what? You know? Actually, I've noticed, noticed, noticed some of those extreme um, sunsets and some uh, sunrises uh, mm. down here because it's very consistent where we are. And it seems to be um, ranging more than it generally does. Well, yeah, I've, mm. well I, I was going to say, have you seen how angry the sun is? No, have you been looking at sunspots? Yeah, I've had the telescope out. There's a massive one going all the way across the front of the sun. It's a really big one. Um, and uh, they're, they're saying it's, uh, well, if you're looking at um, the weather of the sun, that's not a particularly good thing to see when you see a massive great big sunspot like that. Um, and, of course, we've had lots of coronal mass ejections as well. It's been, it's been busy up there. So, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things just, you know, rattling about at the moment all at the same time. Well, that could be an EMT, right? Isn't that what they call it? Well, yeah, if, if you've got some electro, well, uh, electromagnetic wave, um, which is coming towards Earth, uh, this is uh, the equivalent of an EMP, EMP. Uh, electromagnetic pulse, yeah, which is the one we would say would knock out all the electrical stuff. Because, um, I mean, the sun's just sending out electromagnetic frequencies, you know, lots of them. But when it, when it decides to get busy, you know, and start throwing out lots of, uh, coronal mass ejection material then we're going to get and it takes about two days and then it hits us because uh, everyone's freaking out about the grid being down I mean have you got anything on that? Yes Yeah. What, do you, what have you heard? I have that in the calendar let me look for it because I've, I've not heard a good, a good enough explanation as to why the grid will be down Well I think the grids are really uh, um dangerous thing to mess with because the grid is what keeps us surveilled, what keeps the military operating. But go ahead, Mindy. Well, I have it written in on the 14th of September. The power grid goes down in the U.S., lasts for seven days, comes back up on the 21st. Yeah, I'm going to put that in. Uh, U.S. down. And when you say it comes back up? 21st. Lasts for seven days. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know, I'm skeptical about the power grid because um, Paul's right, because, I mean, that, that's where all the surveillance is coming from. Exactly. I mean, if people's, if people's phones aren't working, you can't track them. All the algorithms go to hell. They're not on the internet, you know. I mean, a few of them might get a bit of power, but if the ISPs are down, that's it, isn't it? Right, that's how they're controlling us right now. I think, I think the power grid would have to go down as a side effect of something else. You know, I think if you had, if you had a huge disaster, you know. But uh, now, I'll, I'll give you the big one, right, because all this is leading up to uh, the same conditions before World War I and World War II. Now, what was happening before World War I and II, because everything's a remix, so it's all going around again, um, the economies were not doing well. We've got all kinds of problems all over the place, and war is always good for the economy. I mean, who doesn't love a war, you know? That's always great. Um, so they've planned to do exactly the same thing, and they want to get a war going. Uh, Russia's just marched uh, 20,000 troops to its western front. Have you heard that one? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, I they're don't. moving. Yeah, they're moving, aren't they? It looks like... Uh, looks, no. Yeah. Sorry. No, go, go ahead. Yeah, so um, they, they're marching towards the Western Front. Um, there's, there's also talk as well about... Um, do you remember the story about Hitler not getting killed? Yes. Uh, that was a good of, one, wasn't it? A lot of people think he's in, he was in South America, Argentina. There's a lot of people uh, 
actually they're people that look like him or or have, bear his name. There's parts of uh, Patagonia where they speak German. I mean, it's but that's possible. Well, funnily enough, the FBI actually documented that he was there, so that kind of would help. Yeah. Um, yeah, they put that in there. Now, did you hear about exactly what happened? So they came out of the war, right? Um, they they come out with, uh, I think it was three subs. Um, there was a big chase coming over from Germany over to Argentina, and they got two of the three subs. They didn't get the other one. And the other one was bound for Antarctica. And this is the Antarctic bases they were talking about. I remember I was talking to you about this before, you know, with the, uh, this is the German underground in, Antar- in Antarctica. Exactly. Uh, well, I remember seeing, um, I didn't really read much about it, but someone says apparently a city has become visible in Antarctica. Yes, uh, what is it, New Schwagerland, New, New Schwabenland? Yeah, New, it is, I can't say it either, New, New yeah. Swaziland or something. New Swaziland, yeah. Yeah, and that's that. That was uh, Germany's bit, wasn't it? Um, that they they had of Antarctica, um, but they say there's, um, there's there's also there's lots of really weird stuff going on because you know while you know while the Americans were pretending to go to the moon in 1969, well, do you know what the, do you know what the Russians were up to? No, where were they going? Antarctica every time. That makes lots sense. Of, Lots of trips. They would love in Antarctica, you know. They were going there a lot. And it does make you scratch your head, doesn't it? Well, the whole uh, uh, American space program was to uh, just reassure the Americans that we were, you know, the best and ahead of everybody and everything. And so, you know, the faking of the moon landing uh, took our mind off of everything. Meanwhile, the, the Russians, who are real serious... Go down to Antarctica. It makes sense. It does. It makes sense. Yeah. Well, the Russians knew you couldn't get out. That was the thing. You see, because do you remember? You remember your firmament, firmament that you were talking about? Right. Well, this goes back to the original landings, eighty thousand BC, right? If you've got, uh, let's say, a population of ETs that have come down to Earth, who are the original gods, and one of them was Lucifer. Okay. Okay. Now this is. This is where we're going. I mean, there's millions of names for the guy, you know, but they reckon that the original guy, Lucifer, is particularly real. They say that he's not messing around here. This is this is a real guy, you know, or whatever he is. Um, and they say he's actually around. Anyhow, so they come down to Earth, and now, remember, this is a really nasty bunch of people, and they're being chased by someone who has even more technology than them, if we have the original story. And they say what they did was they put, uh, like, a veil or a protective force field made of some sort of technology that would mean that nobody could leave the planet effectively without having the keys to that technology. And this goes back to the John D thing. Uh, is it John D? Yeah, the, our guy, our 007. 007. Right. Now, one of, the, one of the bits of information that he got, you see, because this, this all keeps, I keep jumping about, but it's all kind of linked, you know, um, Now, he got the piece of information which was effectively along the lines of you need to destroy matter and then you need to be able to make matter, sorry, you need to destroy matter with energy and then you need to be able to create matter from energy to to have the keys to get out through this um, firmament, veil, barrier, whatever you want to call it, you know, that's surrounding the earth, which effectively means that you know, nobody can escape, including right. us at the moment. Um, so he was given this information, which, you know, ultimately led people to nuke things, which might actually be an ancient technology. I quite like the idea of there being ancient energy weapons, and they just reinvented them. Um, in fact, there was an interview with, um, uh, who was on the Manhattan Project now? Well, you've um, got Oppen- Oppenheimer's the big name in the Manhattan Project. I think it was it was one of the guys, right? Um, they were doing like a, a press conference, yeah. And one guy who nobody understood what any of this was about because it confused everybody, and they didn't bother reporting on it. Really, I think somebody mentioned it in a write-up, but anyhow, not knowing what it meant, they said, um, "So um, this is the second time we're doing a nuclear test." Then, and this was their first nuclear test, right? 
Uh, and he came back and said, in this era... Right. And it was, it was along those sort of lines, you know? Like, uh, this isn't the first time we've been nuking things. You know, this is this is this has happened before a long time ago, and he nodded and agreed and said, "Yeah, well, it's the first one in this era, my friend." You know, and there was a lot of smiling and like, ah, "I know what you mean." And what? everyone else was completely oblivious because they wouldn't have known that several thousand years ago, people had energy weapons and all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, oh gosh, uh, recent development: they found one of the Indian flying machines from three thousand BC. Um, they got things that look like UFOs flying around. There's been 20 Marines killed, I think, in an Indian cave or something. Interesting. Uh, that, was, that was a recent story. They said apparently they can't get in because there's a force field around it killing everyone that goes near it. That's interesting. That was I... a crazy story. And this was going back to... Because you remember in the Bible, right, um, and various other history books, they had flying machines. This is circa, I don't know, 3000, 4000 BC. You know, this is like Egyptian-y kind of times, you know. Um, and they had flying machines back then. And there was all kinds of weird stories leading up. This is all proper Old Testament stuff. And they say that actually, remember the remix thing we were talking about? The Old Testament is remixed from much earlier writings, and it keeps on getting remixed. So by the time it even got to the Old Testament, it had been through a few iterations, you know, so we've had quite a lot of rewriting. Um, but essentially, uh, they're saying that uh, Egyptians had light bulbs, they had energy centers, um, they had technology that could potentially send them up into the clouds flying around, um, which it does throw an interesting one in, actually. Uh, you know Roswell, do you remember that uh, alien crash? Roswell, yes. Well, there was a twist with that. Did you ever find out what happened when they took it all apart? Did you, did you ever read the papers that actually did an analysis on how much wreckage there was? Like actual size of the wreckage if you tried to rebuild it back into a thing? No, I didn't. Well, there was, there was a really embarrassingly boring report that went out that nobody cared about, um, which actually did an analysis on the amount, the quantity, the weight and just all the stuff they had, and everything they found originally, they documented it all. And the Roswell original crash was crappy technology. And they looked back at it, and they put it all back together, and they said, oh, this, is, this isn't very good technology, you know, this is actually quite bad. And it is almost along the lines of, like, I don't know, let's say something the shape of a water balloon underneath an actual balloon, you know? It was that kind of configuration. Um, and what, they, what he was saying was the technology just wasn't there. They just didn't find anything that was really exciting, which gives you the twist back to this thing was a cheapo surveillance vessel effectively doing a bit of r uh, radar, you know, like almost from a balloon kind of thing, yeah, um, and beaming it back to somewhere else, which is going towards, you know, the other people who are on the planet who aren't us. Right. So you're thinking it's not an ET extraterrestrial craft. It's a well, craft... It's, it's, it's not made by us, right? It isn't anything we know about. The materials are different because it was like a spring steel, you know, like steel that finds its shape again. Right, right. I saw those. Yeah, we, we didn't get that for years until after that, you know. But it looked ET. If you didn't know there was anyone else here, you'd say it was ET. And if you found a being, which I don't think they did actually, not at that time anyway, um, not for the original crash time, they didn't find a being, but they'd go, wow, this is amazing. And what they just bumped into was the other people who were lurking around, because remember we've got David Icke's friends, the reptilians, of course, haven't we? We've got the reptilians, yeah. Well, this is, this is the other unknown party that nobody can particularly put their finger on, you know, saying, are there reptilians, aren't there reptilians? But if you're going back to the original stuff here, where we've got people who landed, we've got alien technology necessarily, we've got, we got spliced with the alien DNA. Um, I mean, uh, all, the different, um, all the different bodies of peoples fit into three different categories, pretty much. There was the original batch who were really clever, who were made in the image of the original landing parties. Um, so this is our crypto-terrestrials, which I think somebody gave it a name, like, uh, I can't remember what it was, something hominids, I can't remember. Um, but I call them crypto-terrestrials anyway. So they're not from space, they're from here. 
uh, but they'd stay out of the way. And pretty much they were controlling everything around 12,000 years ago. You know, they were they were properly in control. Pre-flood, they were owning it, you know. And I'm, I'm thinking they, they want to be owning it again. So they were the rulers of the planet. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Then come the second bunch. This is us. Now, we're in, um, I think they were saying that, uh, the land would be called Atlantis, you know, this is the original Atlantis, which I've heard all kinds of reports from Atlantis being buried under Bermuda when it went down after the flood. I've heard it stretching across the north of England, believe it or not. We're talking Scotland, Greenland, that kind of area, you know, it was, it was that sort of area. Um, no one's quite put their fingers on it yet, but we'll keep looking. Anyway, so we've got Atlantis where we were, uh, where the original crypto terrestrials were but they decided they weren't going to follow the gods and they were going to you know they were going to do their own thing so they all left um so the gods tried again so they spliced in some more dna except they made us more stupid because the original guys figured it out pretty quick and decided to leave so they made us and we were stupid and we were great you know we, we were total servants you know we were built to be servants and that's exactly what we're doing you know that's what we do best um, but get this, the crypto terrestrials found out we were there, they come in and they suddenly realize that we're, we're cousins effectively, you know, I mean, we're not that different, we're just a lot dumber. Um, and they said, well, okay, why don't you come with us? All the men said no. And the women said, yeah, actually, you want to be coming with them. And the women left and brought the men with them. You know, they said, we're all going. Well, you stay here if you want, but right. we're leaving. So we've got our original ETs who are not doing very well here. They've had two bunches of people leave them, you know. And this is going back to Adam and Eve and the serpents. Now, believe it or not, the serpent was the crypto terrestrials who was trying to help us. Because the serpent was uh, actually, the, the apple on the tree uh, was knowledge. That was what the apple on the tree was. Uh, it was kind of alluding to, okay, take a bite from the knowledge apple and you'll never be the same again. And they weren't. They got told how to do lots of interesting things, mainly how to escape from the gods who were being their captors. So God was bad. So the original gods that everyone uh, was worshipping, this is 80,000 years ago, the original proper pagan gods were not good at all and you should definitely not worship them. So anyway, so they come out of it and they go, oh no, what are we going to do this time? Well, we're going to make them stronger, um, we'll give them some intelligence, but we're going to make them um, have no feelings, no compassion, generally we're going to make these guys cold as you like. Psychopaths. And, yeah, what? Psychopaths. Yeah, so we've got no feelings, no caring, just get the job done, you know. Not going to let a conscience get in the way of this. Oh, yeah. And then we have the reptilians. And this is, this is the original bunch of them who were probably not that different, uh, but we don't know, obviously, because um, we're, we're not really going to be seeing any pictures of them coming around anytime soon, I wouldn't have thought. Um, so if this is true, we've got our third bunch the reptilians get created. Now, remember, this is a very long time ago. Um, we have a flood in the way, which is a bit of a problem. Now, in that time, they developed lots of technology because they've basically been told what to do. So they've stolen some of the original technology, some of the artifacts. They're all very alien and strange, and, you know, they're going with it, you know, because uh, that's, that's what they do. So, they, uh, so we don't know what happens to the reptilians, but we know we got out with the cryptos. So the cryptos are our bosses because we're too dumb to figure anything out. They've got a really great plan because they're fabulously intelligent, you know, average IQ from 180 upwards, you know, like off the scale intelligent. Uh, very good with maths, funnily enough, which uh, probably helped out with quite a lot of building design and probably a little bit of laser cutting as well, especially when you're making things pyramid shaped. Anyhow, so they all split. Uh, we get bossed around by the cryptos for, I don't know, tens of thousands of years. Meantime, the reptilians go off at an angle. Uh, the Great Flood happens, so this is either Nibiru coming in and knocking out Tiamat, which then rains down ice and snow and rain, you know, in the cold regions, and obviously all this rain turns to ice, which gives you the Ice Age, as it was defined by science. And in the rest of the areas, we just get lots of water coming in. Uh, we were mostly fresh water before, and we get all this salt water coming in. 
So everywhere floods, kills off most of the people. The cryptos lose their control because there's not that many of them compared with us because, you know, we're good at breeding. Um, the reptilians end up breeding with everything. Um, so they're kind of breeding themselves like outs. Uh, meantime, we've got the original ETs, of course, that go into the daughters of men. Uh, because they find them pretty nice, you know. Like years later, they find out they've got some good looks now. Uh, and then, of course, they make a new race, which are the uh, the giants. So we've got the titans coming out of that. And this is the, what I was saying before, up to 400 feet high, uh, usually 9 feet, 35 feet, 70 feet, uh, which is when you see the statues in um, Egypt. You see those huge rooms, don't you? Exactly. Huge steps. Yeah. It's all different scale, isn't it? You know, they're just enormous. And they've even got them in Mexico. They're turning up all around the world. They're digging these guys out of the ground. Uh, they're digging radioactive bones out of the ground. Uh, there's a bit of a debunk going on at the moment for ancient nuclear war. Um, but well, I they... don't think it was necessarily nuclear war like we have, you know, because, uh, you know, 9-11 was nuked with, like, suitcase yeah. bones, wasn't it? Well, they... They're little ones. Right, the original nuke, according to Sitchin, occurred in Iran or Iraq. And there's evidence. Melted rocks that had to have been affected by those things thousands of years ago. Yeah, yeah, this is it. And they've got radioactive corpses they're digging out of the ground. You know, weirdly radioactive things that really shouldn't be. And, you know, people are trying to debunk it. Going, well, if there was an ancient nuclear war, you know, in this place, then the city would have been destroyed. Well, you know, it might have been destroyed, but you've heard about the temple in Israel. It's got a habit of popping up again, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, you... Have you heard about the plans for the third one? No, the one that's just... The one in Israel now? Just announced the third third temple's going up. Yeah, we we were listening about that yesterday. It's it, mm. they're gonna they're taking down or they're transforming a uh, a mosque. Mm. That's that, right. You know, but it's got to go up officially. But the, um, what was it now? I think you know the abomination of the desolation. No, tell me about that one. Uh, meant to be animal sacrifices, just, you know, gruesome sacrifices going on in religious places. Um, and they did it years ago. Um, they, they actually got a lot of complaints from other people around the Middle East that it was going on because, you know, they were, they were really causing a lot of trouble. Um, so they're saying that actually got done. So, you know, like if you're trying to tick the end time prophecy boxes, you know, you can you can go a bit of a way through this and, you know, people... People are starting to say Obama's the Antichrist. Well, it'd be interesting, won't it, if he declares martial law and says you're not electing me out of the office? Well, the election, the elections in the U.S. have been a joke for a long time, and yeah, but they gen they generally kick the president out, though, don't they? The old one when he's done two terms. Right, but what's the difference between him or Hillary or you know? There's no there's no difference. Uh, it just well, depends on what they want. Uh, what kind of prophecy they want to fulfill with him, you know, whether yeah. the, the fact that he's black or the fact that he looks like uh, Tutankhamun, uh, you know, what what exactly do the role do they want him to play? No, there. Did, did you did you see that mock up then of him and the, uh, the Egyptian? Um, yeah. Was it Tutankhamun? Was it? Yeah, Freeman. Sure Freeman was Fly. It? Yeah, Freeman Fly did that originally. It's a clever piece of work. It does look like him. He did, yeah. I remember Freeman Fly. Actually, he's quite cool, actually, isn't he? Right, and then there's the uh, the statue that appears in the, uh, I think it's appeared in the Metropolitan Museum of Art of Michael Jackson that appears after he's dead. Did you see that? No. Yeah, it's no. So we don't know what we're dealing with. <laughs> we don't know what we're dealing <laughs> with here. It's amazing. But you know what you you know what you accidentally did, Richard? What's you that? accidentally ed ended this broadcast on a really high note because <laughs> because if you look if you step back and step back and step back and you're not nose to nose with martial law economic collapse the grid going down fema care if you step back and look at it well you were looking at it from a thousands and thousands of year perspective it really allows you to take a breath and say well okay yeah this body 
this body that we're living in, this time that we're living in, it's very transitory, very fast. And whatever the lessons or whatever we're, whatever we're experiencing here uh, is just an experience. And yeah. it's happened before. Worse things have happened. Whatever's going to happen, I'm going to look at it like a light show, you know? Uh, I can remember... Well, I can remember. Well, do you, Go do ahead. You know, do you know the, do you know the bit we should we should do actually, which is um, which is probably a whole another talk on its own, is the solution to the problem because nobody actually has gone down that route. We've just described the problem, haven't we? Let's do that, Richard. Let's do that in a couple of weeks after we're into this uh, September Melu that's happening. Let's uh, try to proceed all the major events by a little talk on. What we, what we should be doing, what we should be looking at going through these times, how we should yeah. be putting this whole thing in perspective. Yeah, because nothing's new, you see. This has all happened before in various ways. It's just a remix of everything that's happened before. And the thing is, you see, people have done it and they've got through it and they've changed things. And I think if you look back and you can learn from what's happened before, I think you can either stop these things from happening or... We can completely solve the problem, so it never happens again. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, I thank. Think we should. I think we should look towards that. That'd be good. I think we should too. Well, thank you very much, uh, Richard. We're going to have you back real soon, and uh, take care. Yeah, you're welcome. That's good.